Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. So today, since this is the month of October, obviously I'm gonna do some spooky related stuff. I mean, granted, I probably would have done it anyway, but still, I'm gonna be talking about a film I just got to watch it not that long ago. So just like, okay, fuck it, let's get to it. let's get to it finally. Yeah, this is gonna be one of the more mainstream horror flicks, I guess, and even though not everybody knows about it really. But anyways, the film Tired Ragdoll. See, I just got to watching this not long ago. It's, of course, has some to do with some weird, bizarre shit and whatnot. And yes, as you might expect, it's one of those kind of killer type, serial killer type movies, kind of, I guess. Get more of that in a bit. Anyway, of course, as always, let's talk about the plot, shall we? So here we go. So what happens here is that there was this young girl that does discover this old rag doll in her family's new home that has some deadly intentions all of for all of them so of course it's what seems to be like a normal thing like okay you, you're in the house you want you, you're gonna be living with family and whatnot this group of characters you're thinking it might be okay they are in a relationship this is this is a character this young girl they have to take care of and all that just seems pretty straightforward right so it seems like it may be a okay. Yes, around the idea that there is these good characters going to this household because it's just a place they moved in. Everything seems a okay. Everything seems fantastic. No, nothing can go wrong ever. And yeah, everything seems. Everybody seems happy. Everything seems joyful. Like this, okay. This seems like a new beginning. It's like it's, it's like a new start in life. Everything seems fun, so fantastic. And whatnot. Yeah, if this is something like you seem, if this sounds familiar, that's because it is. It doesn't. This film does not try to do anything new, whatsoever at all. It's just it's the same old, same old kind of thing. So okay. I mean, this film, okay, yes, it uses this doll as a gimmick, as a part of the story. I mean, yes, crying out loud, crying out loud, the, the doll thing. It, it it's on the cover. So you you'd be thinking that. You're gonna see more of the doll, and it just feels like it's false advertisement in some ways because it is. Just one of my major problems I had with this film is that it's it's barely there. It's barely there. Like the young girl somehow develops this connection, kind of like a mental link to this doll. I suppose which is actually kind of creative, actually. But you barely see the doll. And I do like the fact that the doll is being portrayed by somebody in a costume. I like that. So he does use some practical effects. In some ways, I can kind of see why. Because, of course, this film has a very cheap budget. So, of course, the people behind this doesn't have much of a choice. Not really. So, okay, I can't blame him for that. So I can't blame him for being creative. I actually like that. I actually like that, of course. You see this doll being a massive pervert, of course. Looking at people taking a, sh uh, taking a shower and whatnot, of course. There's even a, a, a bit where a character's moaning, and then the character just spies on the person. Don't make me beg now. <laughs> You're funny. Bye. Get your fat ass back here. Yes, ultimately, this is a pretty formulaic type of movie. It doesn't bring anything new to the table at all as if it wasn't obvious enough but i mean there are some decent moments that the film does attempt to be atmospheric i'll, I'll give it that there was some solid effort throughout the entire thing sure so yes there's some solid enough effective setup that does provide a solid means of establishing this family structure for the doll to play with while we're given some kind of series of events i guess you would say especially when it comes to maybe like divorce and whatnot because i mean okay realistically yes of course divorce is a pretty common thing when it comes to families and yes the kid the young girl i guess what do you even call it of course we'll just get upset that she maybe she, did, she feels she's not loved the kid we feel, feel like maybe she did something wrong which yes is a common thing in family so again that's pretty realistic when you think about it 
Like, oh, mommy, daddy don't love me no more. Which, yes, of course, there were some kids out there that were taking it that way. I mean, yes, there were some kids who are understanding. There's some kids who are understanding. I would just accept as a reality, but still, though. And, yes, because of that, the parents would have to divorce, of course, and whatnot. So that's a common thing, too. But they could still make an effort to see their kid and still love the kid anyway that they had together, obviously. And, and of course, mommy over here would tell the kid that they still love the child anyway, regardless, even if the mommy and daddy are not on the same terms anymore like they were in the past. And so that's that going on. Again, that's pretty realistic, actually. So I'll give it that. So, okay. So, of course, I know the people, whoever wrote the script, you were trying to give some kind of story, some kind of backstory around these characters before the, I guess, the killer doll starts doing his thing. So this is kind of like a slasher movie. At least that's how I'm taking it anyway. So, okay, I'm trying to give you a sense of these characters and how their lives are. Before the killing starts, I guess, which is fine. But ultimately, it just feels like they could have done more. It just feels like very half assed. It's what I'm trying to get it. It feels very half assed. Another thing I was definitely is that, say that it turns out the mommy character is a part of the LGBT plus community. It seems like a missed opportunity because there's a bit of homophobia thrown there. I mean, yes, you can't just turn lesbian of the blue it's just something that has been there for quite a while and realistically speaking yes there's quite a lot of homophobic people out there even to this very day unfortunately especially with the religious people Ugh. cannot have the homosexual agenda and liberty those two things are incompatible what agenda what are you talking about with each other you they cannot coexist one is going to have to give either the homosexual gay people are not trying to start liberty what one is going to have to retreat or religious liberty is going to have to retreat every advantage. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. Gay people just want to live their lives. That's literally it. The homosexual agenda comes at the expense of religious liberty. Again, what agenda? Where? Literally where? What's the agenda? Ugh. You see, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I feel that the film could explore this a bit more. I mean, yes, it doesn't necessarily have to be in your face, obviously, but still... You could really turn this into like a real horror movie with people being homophobic, how they could just have the, I guess the, the church people have like a witch hunt, like a witch hunt trials kind of a thing, but with gay folks. They could really make that terrifying and spooky how these people want to do that. And I don't know, you maybe find a way to have the cursed doll be part of it more. You know, the cursed doll would just go after everybody, I guess. And have the cursed dog go after the religious people and go after literally anybody. He doesn't have, I mean, you can go after the husband or the former husband or anybody. But I'm trying to get as that. In some ways, I kind of feel that the doll, like I was saying earlier, was, it felt like it was underused. It felt that the doll was underused. I mean, yes, I understand that we're in a budget. There are ways you can actually get around that, of course. And I know, yes. Using makeup, using makeup is expensive, of course. Got good, decent quality makeup is going to be very, very expensive, of course. Which, yes, I would get. But you could actually, actually, you could actually film all the scenes that require the doll doing its thing first. And then everything else later, because when you think about it, when it comes to making movies, the, the thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand is that it, all the footage is going to be out of order, so you're going to have to do the editing process. You're going to have to put all the footage in order anyway, after the fact, after you film everything, of course. And then that's the thing, you could actually, since it's makeup, good makeup is very expensive, you could actually hire people, could do the makeup for like maybe a few days and just film all this, those scenes recording the doll first and then everything else later. And then, even if you have to use more scenes with a doll, just use close-ups or fire away shots to leave it some kind of impression. But what I'm trying to get at, there's ways around it, okay? I know this is a very, very low-budget film, but there are ways around this, of course, when you think about it. But I do feel like they could have more kills, and they could have more murder scenes. Again, you, when you see the cover of the movie, that's the, like the... 
first thing you think, first thing you think, the dog's gonna have a good amount of murder scenes and whatnot. I mean, there's uh, some, uh, some of it's creative. I say some of the bits and pieces of the film is pretty creative. It's on a little way. I'll give it that. But, but I do feel like the they could have done more. It's very creative in some ways. I'll give that. There's some creative aspects of this film. I'm just trying to give that. It's it, it just feels um uh, lukewarm. This film is very very lukewarm. There's some aspects of this film I did like, and some I didn't. So, I'm not trying to get it. It's a very mixed bag, okay? It's a very, very mixed bag, okay, folks? That's what I'm getting at. It's a very mixed bag, of course. So, let's just believe that they could have done a lot more with this overall story. It's creative, and then sometimes it just feels half-assed. So, I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. I'm not going to say it's a good movie either. It's just somewhere in between. So I'm going to say it's just somewhere in between. I do like the idea. I just wish they could expand upon more in, in various ways. And of course, again, if the budget's the problem, you could have most of the movie take place in the, in the inside the house, which technically they did. Most of the movie does take place in the house anyway. I mean, okay. I mean, yes, of course, you can have to find a way, a story reason to keep everybody inside the house. Maybe blizzard kind of thing going yeah have a blizzard maybe some jackass can try to get out the house anyway and dies and simultaneously maybe it's a dog who killed people inside the house or maybe let's say i imagine so you can fit a bunch of people in there and then have the dog outside and kill some townsfolk maybe some of the church church folks can fall victim too so you have a better but a bigger body count i guess i don't know it's wasted potential wasted potential is like wasted energy a damn shame, I guess you can say. <sighs> All right, whatever. Anyway, ultimately, I'll give this film a overall rating of a 5.0. I think it's a 5.010 for me because it's just meh. It's adequate. Very, very adequate. Thanks for watching and take care. Next time, see you.